Oh boy. Ooh, how is everybody out there? It is Friday. Yes, and I cannot speak more for how good I feel today. There we are. Tally, how are you today? Yes, it is good to see you. Hippie of the Hills, all the way from India. How are you doing, my friend? Egan, Florida, how are you doing? Okay, now, if you are joining us in YouTube or Periscope land, make sure that you give me a comment. That's the only way I can see you guys because I am restreaming. Yes, all right. Spark a sus, how are you doing? All right. And, and if you are listening from YouTube land or Periscope, yes, you can shoot me a message. If you're in Periscope, give me a share. That would certainly help me out and give me a like. And if you are on YouTube, leave a comment and, and smash that like button, hit subscribe, all those good things because that allows more people to see my friendly, happy voice. And we all understand the good work that we're doing here at The Art of Charm, and hopefully we'll be able to reach and inspire more people. Uh, Ashley, hello there as well. JT808, hello to you. All right, now, a couple of things I wanted to discuss today. You know, look at that. There's Charlie and there's Christina. How are you guys doing? My favorite international, my favorite two internationals. Oh, not to, not to leave out Hippie of the Hills either. All right. So, <clears throat> as I was going over, as I was going over things this morning, um, so let me turn that off. As I was going over things this morning, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to talk about today, as that happens usually every morning. However, one of the things that I was thinking about, and this is, I get asked this question all the time, was people ask me about my motivation and my sense of humor and belief structures. And all of those things are connected. Uh, Charlie asked, where's my general Jen? Uh, I don't know. She's been quite busy lately, so I, we haven't seen her. All right. Now, <clears throat> so motivation, belief structures, and sense of humor are all attached. Why are they all attached? Because th they're all inter interconnected. With a belief structure you will need a sense of humor to adhere to it. As you adhere to it, you become motivated. These things all work together and they play a role in keeping you on the right path. The right path? The right path to developing your X factor. Now, here's one of the things that, that most people don't understand. A we all have belief structures, whether you want to admit it or not. It's part of the human condition where you adhere to a certain set of beliefs that enable you to act out in the world. Now, if that belief structure isn't written in stone, so let's we could use an organized religion. So we'll take the three Abrahamic, they all have their own set of rules and philosophies and ideas. Some of those ideas and, and, and rules, we could say are outdated. And as we have moved through the years, we have updated some of those rules. For instance, this idea of different textiles in your clothes and how you should avoid that. Well, today, in today's world, we have a lot of fabric blends and it does just doesn't really matter. And there's no consequences to wearing mixed fabrics. But that is a, a 
a belief structure that at one point people followed. Now, in today's, especially in America, if you, you might live a secular life, but if you live the secular life, you have a set of rules that you can follow that the state provides, but those are rules and laws, those are not philosophies. And if you guys have been listening to the show, we have, we have touched on the ideas of your own personal philosophies. These philosophies give you guidelines in which you can develop day to day. Now, you might, if you live in America and you're a secular person, you might even say that I have no belief systems, I'm, I'm an atheist. And which uh, a lot of folks adhere to. But you have to understand that the idea of atheism is not a belief structure, it's the non-belief in a, in any structure. So the issue with this is that there are a set of beliefs that you adhere to, you just haven't defined what they are. And if you haven't defined what they are, they're malleable, they can, they can change. And if they can change, then you really don't have any guidelines to, in which you have to live in between. Now, as you grow older, those, those guidelines become, they can become more defined so that you understand your own philosophy. But when you're young, it's kind of difficult to understand what that, what that is. However, if you do not pick a set of rules or guidelines to follow, they will be chosen for you unconsciously through the media, through culture, through your friends, because we're herd animals. We don't make those decisions out of the blue. Those decisions and how we operate have been shaped by our environment. And if we haven't chosen what that is, then we are following blindly. I had made, there's a quote that, um, that I had recently picked up, which is learned, what is it? Learned obedience, or I'm sorry, uh, learned, learn, I believe it was learned decision-making equals blind obedience. So if you have been following ideas blindly, then that belief structure, it's, it's formed, but it had been given to you. You either pick one or one will be picked for you. Okay, so now, how does this tie into sense of humor? If you choose, uh, Johnny's having a senior moment, they're coming more and more, more and more are they, uh, are they happening in my daily life? Which brings up my second point is a sense of humor. So once you, once you pick a philosophy or a belief structure that you believe gives you the most opportunity in life, you now need to develop a sense of humor to adhere to the belief structure because you are a flawed human being which means no matter how devout to your belief structure you might think that you are, there will be times where you blow it, where you don't make the right decisions because you don't make decisions in a vacuum. You make those decisions with, uh, with your emotions and your emotions will lead you into some bad decision making through your whole life. I'm at 46 years old. I can't even come up with a comprehensive list of all the incredibly difficult and terrible mistakes that I have made in life. Therefore, you need to develop an, a sense of humor so that you can, can, so you can roll with the punches of 
the, the decisions that you make that don't put you in a position to succeed or win. And that's a difficult thing. If I was to tell you that you are going to make dreadful decisions for the rest of your life and they are going to have an impact in your own psyche, you don't want to hear that. That is a difficult thing to feel good about waking up in the morning to head out knowing that you will make rash, irrational uh, decisions based on whacked out emotions that will lead you into more difficult situations in which you're going to have to find your way out of. Then you can either calmly make the decisions to get you out or continue to dig a bigger hole. Now, this is why having a sense of humor is going to be important because there are going to be such badly made decisions that if you are not able to to laugh about then you're all, then it's going to take its toll on you uh steve irving says mastering getting back on track fast yes absolutely so it's only going to be commonplace that if we allow our emotions to get the best of us, that we, we will be making this, we will be falling off the path regularly. And it's difficult. Now, that sense of humor allows you to laugh off those mistakes and in a dust yourself off and get back on the path and make your way again. With this sense of humor, it allows you the wiggle room to make mistakes in life because they're coming, plenty of them, and they will all have a toll on your, your mental faculties and physical emotional well-being. And without a sense of humor, it could be a pretty rough ride. Much like everybody else, I'm sure when, when I go to sleep at night, there are, your mind races and at times silly memories come up where you're like, oh, and you, you cringe and wince in bed. You're like, I can't believe I had done that. Yeah, without a sense of humor, how can you laugh that off and get to bed? Otherwise, you would just be adding up damage. You would just be adding up mental and emotional damage that you won't be able to get out of. That sense of humor is very important. Tally says critical thinking is a skill. And uh, it's, it certainly is. And we need to be able to think our way back to the path. Now, the last bit of this is going to be motivation. Yes, Tally says uh, meditation helps remove those thoughts. I, I, you know... It helps remove those, but it also gives you an opportunity to dive in and explore them. And by being able to dive in and explore them, you can, you can learn from that event. With, without it, it's impossible. You're doomed to make those same mistakes over again. All right, so the last point that I wanted to make here was that with a belief structure that offers you the most amount of opportunity, then you adhere to, the, to that belief structure to the best of your ability using humor as a, as a way to, to not get too far off track because the more you stick to your belief structure, the more opportunities are provided to you. Now, motivation, the last part of this comes into play because 
Every day that you wake up, you have a choice to engage or not in that belief structure that you have set up for yourself. The more you adhere to your belief structure, the more opportunities are afforded you. However, the more you get knocked off of that belief structure, off your path, then the more demoralizing it becomes. Humor will help you get back on, but at the same time, motivation is your key driver to get back on that path and to continue to follow it out. The more you get knocked off that path, the more your motivation to adhere to that belief structure gets knocked around. But here's the thing, and this is what's important. This is what a lot of people don't get. Your motivation does not come from wanting to be on that right path. The motivation does not come from wanting to be, to adhere to this belief structure. The motivation comes from understanding that that belief structure provides you with the most opportunities. So when that belief structure, when you know it in your own heart and soul and mind, that adhering to it gives you the most opportunities, then you are more motivated to adhere to it. So it's not about waiting around for you to get motivated that to pick a belief structure that affords you the most opportunities in life. It is about picking and deciding what the belief structure is and being motivated by understanding its rewards for you adhering to it. Now, it becomes a game of what is the best, best belief structure. That is on you to decide. That's the beauty of it. That's on you. Now, I can explain my belief structure fully laid out because I've been dancing in it and building it for the last 15 years of my work in psychology and philosophy and self-development. Now, it works for me, it has great predictive abilities, and it has utility in my life with all the opportunities that it has opened for me. That is on you to decide which one, which belief structure is going to work for you. And you don't, you don't lay out a completely constructed belief structure. You can, but here's what I suggest. I suggest that you start off small. You start off with one idea, one philosophy, one belief, and add on to it. And I would start with the, with the big three. So the big three is going to be what you eat, okay? What is the belief structure to your diet? Which one gives you the best predictive abilities and has utility that best works for you? So if, if you don't think that eating well is important, well, then you can imagine when you eat garbage, how that affects you. If you change your belief in it, then you change your diet. You're going to put together a diet that gives you the best opportunities for your personal well-being. So number one, diet. Number two, exercise. So what is the best belief for you with exercise? What gives you the, the best feeling of well-being and what gives you the best utility of your own body? And number three, sleep. What is your philosophy or belief structure to sleep? Now, 
If you start with those three pieces, what is your belief structure? What is your sense of humor about it? And then be motivated to adhere to it because your well-being, what you get from adhering to it, pays off. It pays off in your own well-being. It pays off in you feeling excited. It pays off with creating opportunities for yourself. From, from there, you can build belief structures away from that. But if you get those three handled, belief structure, sense of humor to adhere to it, and the motivation to adhere to it, then you will find yourself building other beliefs out from it. It's easy. For myself, once you get those three handled, once you get those three handled, you'll be inspired. You will be inspired to create belief structures around your work, around your profession, around your hobbies, around the, the your consuming of entertainment and media. And you will be looking at each one of how it's direct benefits or non-benefits to your life. You will get to a point where it's either adding to your life or taking away from your life. And then you're going to build beliefs around it. This is, this is how you build your own set of beliefs. So, if you're not going to adhere to an organized one and you have not really thought about what it is that you are going to adhere to, what is your guidelines, what is your personal philosophy in life, now you have a system to how you can begin putting this together. Because the more you understand your key drivers and motivators, the easier it is for you to then build boundaries to protect those motivators. Because those motivators are the things that wake you up every morning and allow you to be productive. And when you wake up every morning and you are productive, you go to bed fulfilled. And there is a, not a better feeling in the world than going to bed at the end of the evening with a smile on your face, excited to wake up the next day because you have another fun-filled, fulfilling day that is going to get you closer to what we call a life worth fighting for, which we've talked about on this show. And if you want to understand what a life worth fighting for looks like, you can find that in the archives on YouTube. Because yes, I archive all these on YouTube. And if you're watching from YouTube, make sure you leave a comment, smash the like button, and subscribe. All right, guys, I'm getting plenty of hearts today, so that means that you must like the topic. I am glad. Thank you, guys. Let's go through the comments. Spur the passage. Thank you for the hearts. Charlie says, buy a monkey. Monkeys aren't going to help you. You need, a, you need an animal. Oh, also, I want to say thank you again to 88 Acres. You give me seed bars and protein bars because you enjoy what we do around here at the Art of Charm. That's right. They understand ta talent over there at 88 degrees. So if you like protein bars and seed bars, I would definitely check out 88 Acres. Tell them Johnny from the Art of Charm sent you. It's awesome stuff. Uh, you are what you eat. Yes, you are. You certainly are. Uh, Yolanda, thank you for the hand claps. Most people are too serious in life. Let me tell you this, Charlie, about too serious in life. It is good to be serious, and it is good to put your game face on when you wake up in the morning. But if you do not have a sense of humor, you will be knocked on your ass plenty in life, and it will be harder and harder to get up every time that you find your face looking at the floor. You need a sense of humor 
to dust yourself off and to get back, back in the ring. Because life is a full contact sport and it's going to take you out. It's going to take all of us out one day, one day, all of us. And, and this is the thing. We are already involved in a losing battle. <laughs> Think about that. You were born to die. You're in a losing battle. The only thing that you could do is live your best life, leave a mark, leave a legacy, inspire others, enjoy it to the best of your ability to collect and enjoy with the most experience you possibly can, and then check, ring out on your way out the door and hope that the work that you've put in leaves you smiling when you walk out the door. No one gets out of here alive, my friends. So with that hanging over our heads, your sense of humor and motivation will help you add up a lifetime of inspiration for others to follow because it, that is our job. Christina says, there is no better feeling than feeling accomplished. I wholeheartedly agree, Christina. There is nothing more defeating than the idea that you are not living up to your full potential. In fact, when you are working towards your full potential, you are, you can't help but smile every day when you are adhering to a belief structure that affords you the opportunities to create whatever it is that you want out of life. That is something that we should all be striving for. Yolanda is giving me a smiley face. Are you laughing at me, Yolanda? Or are you showing your sense of humor for our place in this world? Charlie says, wow, Louis Vuitton. What does that have to do? Oh, <laughs> Louis Vuitton has joined us <laughs> right on. So guys, I got to head out. I want you all to have a wonderful Friday, a beautiful weekend. Enjoy yourselves. I'll be back here Monday morning at 8 a.m. Now, I will tell you this. If you enjoyed what I had to discuss today, and you want to hear more about building your own personal belief system and your and to so that you are motivated to crush it in your life let the art of charm help you cultivate and build your x factor your x factor is a set of mindsets and a set of skills that give you the most opportunity and life for you to go out with a big smile and, and inspire those around you. If that is something that you are interested in, all you have to do is shoot me a message on Twitter or Instagram, the words X Factor, and I will get you an application. It is a year long mentorship program where we help you build out those amazing qualities to your life. Charlie says, massive heart bombardment. Yes, I love seeing it. Thank you, guys. Christina, you too. Thank you very much. Guys, I got to head out. I will see you Monday morning, 8 a.m. If you're interested, check out The X Factor. Shoot me uh, that message. All right, guys. Have a wonderful day.